but Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is even mentioned in the New Testament. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John. Hello, this is Pastor Gideon. If you are interested in the Word of God, you are in the right place. This is Kingdom Matters. Did Jesus Christ prophesy about Prophet Muhammad? Now, often you will hear some Muslims claim that Jesus Christ prophesied about the coming of Prophet Muhammad in John 16 verse 7 and even from John chapter 14. And that if it is true, it will mean that the Bible approves of Islam and that Islam is right. But it is not exactly simple as they are made to assume. Let's listen to this analysis and see its proper context. But Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is even mentioned in the New Testament. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I will pray to my Father, I'll pray to Almighty God to send you a comforter. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. And when I pray to my Father, and when he sends you a comforter, he will abide with you forever. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that nevertheless, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. Now this Comforter, if we analyze, in the original script, in the language Aramaic, it is paraclete, which means the praiseworthy, which is the translation of the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But they've converted it into parakletos, which one of its meanings is a comforter. Irrespective whether it's paraclete or parakletos, Alhamdulillah, both these meanings befit the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But many Christians say that this prophecy about the Comforter to come refers to the Holy Spirit. Now, if we analyze the prophecy clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. The criteria for the Comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should go. If he goes, the Comforter shall come. Only after he departs will he send him. So the major criteria for the Comforter to come is after Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, departs. From the Bible, we know that the Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He was there in the womb of Elizabeth. He was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. He was there in the Feast of Pentecost. So surely, this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. It refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. This prophecy again refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says, I have many things to say unto you. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is saying, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear, shall he say. He shall guide you to the truth. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. And this prophecy does not refer to anyone but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here's the argument so people understand your argument. Uh, the comforter, the helper whom Jesus will send. That cannot be the Holy Spirit. That must be a prophet. And the only prophet that fits that profile is Muhammad. That's the objection you heard, right? 
Yes, and because the Holy Spirit was would have been already there. Okay, so good. Go to John sixteen seven. Pay attention, because I'm glad you're bringing these up. Because if you're sincere, it will be a matter of time. You're going to find the church and get baptized and belong to Jesus Christ and worship Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so we'll see. Now go to John sixteen seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send them to you. Right. So the comfort is not there. So that's obviously not the Holy Spirit. That's the argument, right? Yes. And that's the passage they use, right? John 16, 7. Nevertheless, it is convenient that I go, because if I don't go, the comfort won't come to you, right? Yes, but if I depart, I will send them. Okay, so you believe Jesus sent Muhammad? Yeah, silence, right? The same passage that your Muslim buddies are using to prove it's Muhammad proves Jesus sent Muhammad. I will send him to you. So Jesus is Muhammad's God. Now go to John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will testify of me so who sends the comforter the spirit of truth jesus who sent muhammad according to muslims uh Allah. so then jesus is allah muhammad's god so aren't you worshiping jesus because he's the one who sent muhammad and where does the comforter come from oh from the father does the quran say allah's the father no allah's not a father okay so now either you're going to tell me the muslims change the quran change the message of muhammad because muhammad knows the father and the son jesus sent him and he would never deny that his god allah is the father and the son so how dare you perverts pervert the quran and change the message to deny that allah is the father and son because muhammad who's the comforter knows that his god is the father and son and he worships jesus as allah how dare you change the quran after he died go to john 14 verses 16 and 17. and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So you, you dropped your tone when you read it. So wait, you know him because why? He dwells with you? For he dwells with you. So Muhammad was there, huh? So you believe Muhammad pre-existed? No. But hold on. This is Muhammad. And Jesus said, you, Peter, James, and John already know Muhammad. He's with you. And then Muhammad will be in you. So how do you fit Muhammad in them? How did he enter? Did they swallow him? You sure you want to continue okay. this path of stupidity? I'm not saying you, the Muslim stupidity. Okay, I see what you're saying there. I, you sure you're saying what I'm saying? So who more. is it then? If I he's there, do. if he's already there and will be in you, is that a physical human being or is that a spiritual entity who can indwell physical bodies and empower human beings? Okay. Can I ask another thing? Because it's, I, I, I don't, because you think he'll send this comforter. Sure. But then it's, he also says it, it's, it's there and it will dwell with him. Like, sure. I, I don't. Because if you read John in context and not take verses out of context, it says at the baptism, the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus and remained with him. And that's why Jesus says he's with you because he's with me working through me. When I leave, he will then be in you working through you like he's working through me. That's what he means. He's with you, but will be in you. So when I go, I'll send him to now indwell you. Go to John 1, 32 to 33. And John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him and doing this what descend hold on before you move on you don't read too fast you got to learn to see what you're reading descend and what remaining on him yes remaining on him okay when you see the spirit come down in the shape of a dove a visible shape so you know this is the spirit coming down remaining on him now continue this is he who baptizes with the holy spirit keep going 33 and i have seen and testified that his that this is the son of god so you read 32, 33, it looked like you skipped something. And John, and John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So and I have seen, and then you're yeah. going to 34. You don't need to go to 35. I know you like to give me more verses, but stay. The Holy Spirit will come down and remain on him. And you saw what John the Baptist said, right? He said, he is the one, the one you see the Spirit come down on. He, that one, Jesus, will then baptize you in the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Okay. Now go to John 7, 38 to 39. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit, whom, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified did you not understand why jesus says i must go for him to come 
because until I'm glorified, you will not be given the spirit because the spirit is with me. Yes, I do. Now it makes sense now in the context of John, right? It does. And then you see why Jesus sends him because what did John the Baptist say? He is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. So who's going to send you the Spirit and give you the Spirit? Jesus. So now it all makes sense because now think about it. The Spirit is with me, so you know him because he's with you because he's working through me and you see the miracles that I'm doing in union with him. And then he'll be in you because when I'm glorified, I will send him to indwell you. So where's the problem? No, oh, there isn't one. I see it. But there's a problem if you believe it's Muhammad because now you're going to have to admit Jesus is Muhammad's God because he's the one who said yeah. Muhammad, right? But before you go on, I'm going to give you another example. Go to John 16, 14 and 15. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to convince you, you, the agnostic and me, that everything the father owns belongs to jesus and once you believe that then he'll try to believe in jesus so do muslims believe that everything that allah owns belongs to jesus no but jesus says everything that belongs to the father is mine i own everything that the father owns now my question to you whether you believe in god or not just for the argument's sake according to the bible the father's god and as god does he own heaven and earth um yes i would say so yes. well i mean from the biblical perspective and the muslim would be thinking the father is allah okay does he own muhammad yes does he own muhammad's life yes does jesus own everything that the father owns according to this yes so you just admit jesus owns muhammad and you sure you want to use this to prove that muhammad is the comforter i hope you got something from this video God bless you. I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.